Hi everyone and thanks for joining me. Today I have a pin cushion thread catcher. Now this can be a Cricut video. I've got an SVG for you below in the description. You can cut all of these pieces out on the Cricut Maker. But if you don't have a maker, no worries. We can cut this by hand and I've got all the instructions coming up. I think these are going to be great for the upcoming holidays, for your Etsy stores, all kinds of occasions. And aren't they super cute to make them to match whatever decor you want. Now I watched lots of tutorials and I kind of came up with my own method by combining about three or four different tutorials that I saw. So I hope you guys enjoy this size and you enjoy this tutorial. So let's get started. You're going to need three fabrics, one for the outer fabric, one for the lining fabric and the hinge, and another accent fabric for the accent piece and the pin cushion. This is how they're going to be cut. The outer fabric is 9 by 16. The lining fabric is 11 by 16. The pin cushion is five and a half by seven and the hinge piece is five by three and the strip of accent fabric is two by 16. I also added a light interfacing to that nine by 16 piece, that's optional. And I also have an SVG of this entire pattern. If you'd like to cut this out with your Cricut, you can grab that in the description below this video as well as a list of all of the products that I'm using in the video. You're also going to want to have your iron and I'm using the Easy Press mat. I really like using this. I can put it on my desktop and put it away at my convenience. Um, I'll have all of these linked in the description below the video. But we're going to start with our hinge piece. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that all of your pieces are ironed. You don't want any creases in it before we assemble. You're going to take your hinge piece and fold it in half long ways. And then you're going to sew it up one side and down the other. So just two sides are going to be sewn. Leave the one of the short sides open. Okay, you can see I have sewn it on three sides and I've cut off the corner just to help it turn out a little bit nicer, have a little bit more squared corners. You always wanna cut your corners if you're turning something right side out. And then you're going to press this again. I'm using a bone folder, but you can use a chopstick or whatever you have on hand to reach inside that opening and make sure those corners are nice and square. And then give it a good press. And now if you want to add a label to your hinge, like I did, you certainly can. This is the time to do it. Just keep in mind that the hinge is going to be oriented so that the side that's open is going to be the top. So if you're going to do a label, you want to make sure it's directionally correct. So the side that's open will be the top. So you can see I have my label assembled. Next, we're going to work on the pin cushion. Your pin cushion is shorter than it is longer. So you're going to take your hinge and place it right in the center of the shorter side. Now, if you want, you can fold this in half on the short side, just to establish where that center point is and line your hinge up right there. And then you might want to pin this into place. And then you're going to fold this bottom up just like this. Now this fabric doesn't really have a right and a wrong side, but you should be looking at the outside. You just pinned that hinge on the pretty side. And now you're going to take this over to your sewing machine and you're going to sew up and across two sides. And once you've sewn up and across two sides, like I have here, you're going to have one end open. Now you want to use a coordinating thread. I'm using a light gray thread. I just thought that would show up a little bit better for the video. And again, I'm just snipping off those corners, making sure not to cut into my stitch lines, but that's just going to help it have square corners when I turn this right side out. So we're going to reach inside that opening and turn this right side out. And again, you want to use a bone folder or a chopstick and get those corners nice and crisp. Once you have everything turned right side out, we are going to give it another press. And then I'm just going to reach inside and tuck the ends under about a little less, maybe an eighth of an inch. 
And this actually would be easier to do prior to sewing this together, but I forgot, so this will work. We're just going to tuck them in. And once you have those tucked in, we're going to give it another press. And then we're going to take it over to the machine and we're going to top stitch up that side, but leave an opening at the top. It's going to need to be big enough to fill it, put a funnel in there to fill this pin cushion up. So I'm going to sew up to that point and then I'm going to go ahead and sew all the way around just to give it a consistent look. So you can see I've sewn, I left that top corner open, but I have sewn all the way around and left just a gap big enough to fit my funnel in right there on the side. So we have our hinge and our pin cushion almost complete. We're going to set those aside. So now we're going to grab our outer fabric. This is the smaller of the two large rectangles and our trim piece. We're going to fold that trim piece in half. This was two by 16. We're going to fold it in half so it's one by 16 and press. Again, I really love using this easy press mat because I can put it right on my desktop and I don't have to worry about it. Moving an ironing board or moving my project. So now we're going to line this up on one of the long edges of our rectangle with the raw edges facing out and the fold facing towards the center of the fabric. We're going to clip that into place. And you can use these clips, you can use the pens, whatever works for you. I like these wonder clips. And now you're going to take it to your sewing machine and sew one quarter inch all the way across the long edge, one quarter inch seam allowance. And it should look something like this. You can see my stitching. Now you're going to lay this pretty sides together on top of the long rectangle. And yes, the bottom one is a little bit wider. It's supposed to be. And once you have those lined up, you're going to take this back to your sewing machine and you're going to sew right on top of that stitch, same stitch line that you just put in there. You can use clips or pens. Again, sometimes it's easier for me to not use anything, but this is how your sandwich should look. Your pretty side should be touching. That little trim piece that we put is facing down and you're just going to sew right on top of that stitch line. So now you're going to open it up and that trim piece should be laying on the outer fabric. You want that going towards the outer fabric and the lining piece separate. You're going to press that so everything's laying nice and flat the way it should be. I'm trying to keep everything on the screen here. I'm going to use your iron a lot in this project just to make it look nice and finished, but push everything towards the outer fabric. So once you have that nice and pressed, we're going to fold this in half and we're going to establish the center points. Now you can use this, do this with a marker or a pen. You can do this with some straight pins. I'm just going to put a straight pin in there and you could do the measurements and measure it that way, but I just fold it in half and figure out where my center point is and just put a straight pin in there. And we're going to use this in a second, but we want to establish that center point. Now, before we clip this together, we want to make sure and match up those two seams right there because this will show at the end. So match those up and make sure you clip that together. All right, now that we're clipped in half and everything is lined with the way it's supposed to be, we're going to take it to the sewing machine and we're going to sew from the bottom of the outer fabric to the edge of the outer fabric. And then we're going to skip an inch. I'm using the grid on my self-healing mat and making a mark with this Pilot Friction Pen. And then you're going to pick up from that mark and sew all the way down. So you're not going to sew in that one inch opening where the two fabrics meet. So you're going to sew from here to here, skip that inch, and then sew from there to the end. So you can see I've sewn all the way up to that one inch mark. 
I left that little opening and then the rest of it is sewn. The ends are open still. They're supposed to be. Now we're going to use those pins that we marked the center with and we're going to fold the seam, open this tube so that the seam lines up with those center markings that we made with the straight pins or however you marked yours. You just want to make sure that seam matches up with that center point. So there's my pen. I'm matching that seam up in the center. I'm just going to pin it together here. Same thing on this end. There's the seam. There's the pen. Just matching those up. And now we're going to press this seam open. You can finger press, but I like to go ahead and give it a nice press with the iron. It just makes everything look a little more finished. So go ahead and steam that seam open. Once you have your seam pressed open, you're going to take it to the sewing machine and on the outer fabric side, you're going to sew from one end to the other. And on the lining side, you're going to sew, leaving it about a two to three inch opening. I would go with two inch um, just to make sure, but I'm just going to mark mine with a pen. I'm kind of eyeballing it. But you need to have a two to three inch opening. So you're going to sew from the edge to your mark. So you're going to sew all the way down the outer fabric and on the lining you're just going to sew from your marks to the outer edge. You're not sewing in between the two marks. So you're going to sew, backstitch, don't sew between here, and then sew, backstitching. So it should look something like this. This end is entirely sewn shut. This end is sewn shut with the exception of that little spot between the two marks that you made. Now we're getting ready to box our corners. We're going to measure one and three quarter inches across and two inches tall. So one and three quarter inches from the right edge, one and three quarter from there and two inches top to bottom. One and three quarter by two inches. And we're just going to draw a square. Just like that. And then I like to just use some scissors so that I can get a nice and accurate cut. And you're just going to snip that piece out. And now we're going to use that piece as a template to do the other four sides. So I'm just lining it up, I'm using that for a template. And then I'm going to snip the other three sides. So all four corners will have a square taken out of them. Make sure you use the same template for each corner, otherwise they tend to get larger and larger. So in other words, don't use this template to cut the other side. Use that same one. And I'm just snipping those out. Now we're ready to box the corners. If you left too big of an opening here and there's no seam holding that closed, you might want to throw a few more stitches in there. So to box our corners, we're going to open up one of those rectangles that we cut out and fold it flat just like this. And then you're going to sew one quarter inch across the bottom, opening that seam when you close. And then you're going to repeat that on the other side. So the seam should be coming up the middle. And then you're going to repeat it again on all four corners, sewing one quarter inch across each corner. So once you've sewn all the corners, it should look something like this. You can see I've sewn both of these sides. Finger pressing that seam flat, you can hit that with the iron. Again, it just makes everything look nicer when it's finished. And then I've also sewn my lining edges closed. So I have my box corners. 
And again, I'm going to press that seam open on the bottom. And then you should still have your opening right in the center. Now you're going to reach inside that opening. And I like to go all the way to the other end. And you're going to turn everything right side out from that opening. Again, use a bone folder or chopstick or something. Reach inside that hole and make sure those box corners are popped out nicely. And then you can take it over to the sewing machine and just stitch that opening closed. Once that's closed, you're going to tuck everything back inside the bag. And the liner should come out a little bit. A little more than a half an inch or so. So you just want to get the bottoms lined up and then let that liner pull itself out. And then you're going to, again, give it a nice press. Once you've got it pressed, you're going to take it over to the sewing machine and you're going to sew right along the edge of the lining fabric. You're going to sew on the lining, but right above where that trim piece is. So you can see mine, I've sewn right along that edge, right above the trim piece. That's created the casing for our boning. Now you can get half inch nylon boning. It comes in the fabric stores or I've got it linked in the description below the video, but I'm actually using a piece of the zip strips that come on like a box of copy paper. When we get copy paper at work, we cut those off and throw them away. I just grabbed them. It's practically the same thing. And you're going to just stick that right in that little opening that we left in the seam. Remember that little one inch opening we left? That should be at the top of your bag right now. You're going to thread that right through there. Takes a little bit of maneuvering, but it should go pretty easily. I added a little bit of seam allowance in this to make it a little bit easier. The first one I did was really, really tight. So once you have that threaded all the way through, you're going to tuck the ends in. You might need to trim off a little piece. I gave you about an inch extra just in case. You want it to overlap just slightly, but not much. So you're just going to tuck those raw edges in to each side, letting them overlap just a little bit. And this provides just a little bit more structure to the top of the pouch and it keeps it in that nice round shape. Now when you get the boning, it does come kind of curved. So you want to make sure you put it in the direction that's naturally going to curve in the right in a circle. Okay, so now it's time to attach our latch and our pin cushion. And you're going to center that right over that seam that's in the back. And I find it easiest to clip it with some wonder clips. And then you're just going to sew across the bottom. I did a double stitch. And here's how I pinned it when I sewed it. So those clips were just holding it in place. And then I sewed right across the bottom. And I did two lines of stitching just to give it a little extra secure. So basically we're done. All that's left is to fill the pin cushion. So this is a bag of crushed walnuts. You can get this in the pet store. It's actually, I think like where the snake stuff is. They use this in snake cages, I guess. I'm not sure, but ask in the pet store, they'll have it. And you're going to need a funnel and you're just going to stick that inside that little hole that you left in the pin cushion. And then slowly add some of your crushed walnuts. Now. If you don't have a funnel, you can make a paper funnel. That's perfectly fine, but you're just going to start filling it up, keeping an eye on the pin cushion part to see how full it is. Now I've got mine pretty full, so I'm going to take the funnel out carefully. You want to leave enough room at the top that you still have room to sew this. You can hand sew this. I'm actually going to sew it on the sewing machine. I probably got a half an inch that's not full. 
So I'm going to put a pin in here just to keep the crushed walnuts from coming out. But if this makes you nervous, you don't want to get that near your machine, which I don't blame you. You can totally sew that shut by hand. But I'm just going to take it over to the sewing machine and stitch right down that side. And that's it. You did it. You made your thread catcher. I think these are really, really cute. And a great idea for the upcoming holidays for anybody you know who is a sewer or even a scrapbooker. These are great to hang off the edge of the table to catch those paper scraps. And a great fabric buster to use up some of those scraps that we've been hoarding. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, subscribe, and share. Click that bell notification so that you're notified next time I release a video. And until next time, never stop making. See ya. Bye.